Hi, welcome to another episode of Hot Takes. And I'm afraid to say I've been proved right. But on this occasion, I really wish I wasn't. Did a video the other day and we talked about the worst waiting times in hospital history. Um, August was the worst ever. And then it got worse in September. And this is still the warm period. We haven't even got to winter yet. And in that piece, I said that what's going to happen, because hospitals are taking so long to get through the, you know, people in A&E and &E you know, out to the wards or whatever, and to get them treated, I said what will happen is that ambulances will turn up, but the ambulances won't be able to disembark their uh, patients. And so the ambulances will be queuing in hospital car parks. And now this is happening. But of course, while ambulances are in the hospital car park, they're not out there on the streets where they're needed. And it's been revealed that in some cases, a, a, an ambulance call, you know, will relate, will result in a delay. So you call the ambulance and the emergency services will say, yes, yes, we'll get one to you. Oh, how long will it be? Two days. Someone could be lying there. They've had massive heart attack, a stroke, who knows, something pretty damn serious. And there could be a two day wait for an ambulance because they can't get the person on the ambulance into an A&E ward. This is absolutely terrifying. There could be a major accident on the A9. They happen all the time, don't they? And the police have attended and the fire engine are cutting people out of cars and whatever. And there's not an ambulance in sight. People are going to die. I mean, it, it's, it's clear. People will die. And as this is a direct result of deliberate SNP government policy and it can be shown to be deliberate SNP policy then the SNP must be held responsible and I don't mean at a corporate level sure yes at a corporate level but also because it's a health and safety issue at a personal level and so Neil Gray as the health minister must be personally held to account Shona Robinson, who's in charge of finance, who's not putting the money into the NHS, must be personally held to account. And of course, John Swinney, as head of the party, must be held personally account. And they should be they should be the ones who are prosecuted and go to prison for corporate manslaughter. Because that's what this is. Their policies that they've decided on are killing people. Now, these numbers are, I mean, they are just astonishingly bad. And to be fair, the two-day wait is exceptional. But the fact is it exists. There were call-outs and they were told two days. But don't think that the average is any better. It's pretty, pretty bad. Now, one patient whose life was deemed at risk, even had to wait well over two hours before Mercy Crews arrived to help them. Now, these are the ones that turn out in the little cars, not even in an ambulance. These are the ones that attend on site. Someone who has had a heart attack had to wait two hours for the team to get to him to rest him there. The ambulance hadn't turned up. They couldn't get him to hospital. They didn't have the ambulance. They just had the response car. Now, of course, this is absolutely the Scottish government. The Scottish government will try and blame um, the Tories, will try and blame Labour, will try and blame Westminster, will blame Brexit, will blame the 1957 Aston Villa team, anything other than who it actually is, which is them. Now, figures obtained by the Scottish Tories show that Scots, in uh, even the most critical of conditions, 
are sometimes forced to wait many, many hours for treatment. One yellow category patient in Lothian, the lowest at risk, even waited 48 hours for an ambulance in May this year, while an amber call-out, which is even more serious, faced 22-hour delay. A 22-hour delay. Um, the most risk, the high-risk one, is purple. That's what they call, they, they code, colour code them. Purple's the high risk. Um, and one patient in Glasgow, and you'd think Glasgow with the big hospital and lots of ambulances would be better. You're not out in the Highlands or anything. Had to wait well over four hours for help to arrive. And that's only for the help to arrive. They have to get them to hospital. and They could be sitting eight hours in the ambulance in the car park in the hospital. There are reports of people waiting in the ambulance, or waiting for an ambulance, sorry, for 32 hours. Um, and another one, 11 and a half hours waiting for an ambulance. 11 and a half hours. This is just astonishingly bad. Now, Sandesh Galane, who's the uh, Tory health spokesman, said that these figures are absolutely terrifying. He says they're reprehensible. He says that they are shameful. And he says that uh, Neil Gray needs to consider his position. Neil Gray must resign. He says these are life-threatening weights and any health secretary who is overseeing this is not doing his job and must go and i think he's right i mean it's absolutely i mean it's disgraceful it's inhumane <coughs> and yet <clears throat> i'm sure many of you like me probably aren't surprised at it and that's the really bad thing now gray obviously is responsible but he hasn't got a clue what he's doing he's got no plans to fix it and even if he did he doesn't have the funding because shona Robertson won't give him any money because, hey, unless the money's going to keep Angus Robertson topped up with champagne and caviar, they haven't got any. Um, and so what do you do? I mean, it is an absolute joke of a service. And think now, this is the beginning of mid-October. How bad is it going to be in January or February this year coming? How many Scots are going to die because of their policy? I tell you, look after yourself, folks. Because if anything happens, you are well and truly screwed. Thanks a lot.